Yes, I see you. I see auntie and uncle now, and I see little Abhi. Okay. And Jee, hi. And here's Abhiya. अरे वाह आपका लगता है painted red क्यों है painted blue हो गया आज. नमस्कार कैफे रेनी डेज में आप सबका स्वागत है आज हम एक ऐसे परिवार से मिलने जा रहे हैं जो कि पूरा ही परिवार बहुत ज्यादा मोटिवेशनल है और मुझे बड़ी खुशी हो रही है कि मैं माथुर परिवार से आपका परिचय कराने जा रही हूँ जस्ट अ रियली ब्रीफ कपल ऑफ सेंटेंसेस अबाउट व्हाट इट इज दैट वॉज मोटिवेशनल सो दे अंडर टुक अ रोड ट्रिप फ्रॉम सिंगापुर टू लंडन टू वॉच द वर्ल्ड क्रिकेट कप टू सपोर्ट इंडिया एंड दे ड्रोव all these miles now a few facts and of course we'll we'll go through more uh, later on anyway on this equator to arctic journey they drove through 21 countries two continents and dra- drove continuously for 48 days the total trip was 61 days okay so uh, to squeeze these two months into 40 to 50 minutes in a batchit session uh, is quite difficult so what i thought is we'll do um, a few rapid fire um, question and answers no. how many bags did you pack we have 17 bags oh and out of which how many milk packets 350 okay how many countries did you visit in total we visited 21 are uh, we do you know how many miles or uh, kilometers you must have covered how many kilometers 24 24568 Okay. So, how much? Uh, how many days did you travel in total? Total, it took us sixty days, including wow. the UK round. How many days did you spend preparing for this trip before you set off? So we spent two and a half months preparing for the trip. Whoa. Okay. Or वापस आने के बाद थकान निकलने में कितने दिन लगे? <laughs> I mean, uh, the travel back and Thailand Nikola was, let's say, another week at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, that's that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. And how many miles or kilometers did you cover every day? On average, we did about six hundred kilometers a day. The maximum we did was close to eight hundred kilometers. Typically, hmm. around six hundred to eight hundred in a day. How many hours does that translate to? So it used to take. Literally, we would start at seven a.m. in the morning, and then we would reach. Uh, the destination for the day by uh, 7 uh, last question and by the end of the trip you obviously had gained a lot of celebrity status you were a much very much in demand right? so do you know roughly how many interviews you did newspapers tv channels did, uh, on a road trip uh, um, on a sunday morning we went to um, bbc network yes. it was the breakfast show yes and yeah, they interviewed us the icc we got very lucky we probably got close to 20 publications uh, world over um it was we just a fever star. of yeah we, we were on star tv as well uh, condé we nast traveler india mein kai sare newspapers mein the um, hindustan times times of india in the express uh, the express uh, then uh, move on to our next rapid fire straight away highlights of various countries so if i shout out a country if you could give me back a memory or an uh, incident so i'll start from the very beginning when you set off in singapore singapore flag off by indian high commissioner in singapore so that you were flagged off by um, the commissioner yeah. himself wow what an honor malaysia petronas twin tower the highest oh, one of the, the highest. Highest. thailand thailand Uh, beach, Krabi Beach, and the very nice highways and road along the sea. Laos. Okay, so uh, Laos. The most important thing there was this was the first country where we started driving on the other side of the road. When we reached Laos, we shifted to the other side of the road, and we continued all the way for the next. 19000 kilometers so uh, just a quick um, a pause for the audience this is also the route that they took so i'm just literally following the route and the countries as we go along uh, right the next one was china i think for that uh, would be the start of the silk route because we were also along the way traversing the ancient silk route so that the china xian uh, was the start of <laughs> difficult to just name one thing i suppose for china Pakistan 
and Kyrgyzstan, uh, the beautiful scenic Pamir Highway, one of the most scenic and high, highest, second highest highway. Snowfall there. Pakistan. Uh, I would say the warmth of the people and also the beauty of Samarkand. Uh, both, I don't know which one wins between those two. When we are walking down the road, uh, mm. somebody would come to us and say, where are you from? We love the sari you're wearing. They knew Hima Malini. They knew so many things about India. And there was this one lady who actually just met us on the side of the road uh, near a lake. And she was like, oh, I love India. I would love to visit there one day. Um, I live not very far from here and I make very good love. And she actually invited us to her place to come and uh, taste her wow. love. If I had to choose yeah. one country, which was my personal favorite, I would say Uzbekistan. I loved yeah. it. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, uh, what we really um, uh, enjoyed was the solitude. There were long stretches of land where there was nobody, no towns even, for miles and miles. Um, mm. So uh, we were in this region called Aral. And it used to be a sea, Aral Sea used to be there, but now it has turned into a desert. Also a peek into the future that if we don't take care of our natural resources, you know, you can't take your seas and lakes and rivers for granted. Mm -hmm. A slight peek into the future and taking care of your resources as well. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, the beauty, the long prairies. Travel, open it. It's a good message for the kids as well. Uh, Russia. Ballet. Ballet dance. Uh, which ballet did you see? Do you, do you remember the name? Story of the Nutcracker. Finland? Finland is full of lakes. Lot of uh, water bodies are Sweden? Sweden was uh, our entry to the Arctic Circle. And then we stayed at the Ice Hotel, which is very, very, very memorable. Hmm. And this is this is quite a highlight of the tour because, of course, one of the one of the things also about the tour is um, equator to Arctic. So yeah, huh? Thank you. We went to a Legoland, the original La Legoland in Denmark. Can come true, you know? Yes. <laughs> Germany. Germany. The highlight was the autobahn highways. Um, mm. Really, the best uh, in the world, and we could take some liberty with the speed. There. Netherlands. Netherlands, there are two things. One is that lot of uh, windmills and 26% of the land in Netherlands is below the sea level. Belgium? So Belgium, it was, uh, we, we took a stop and had the Belgium chocolate. <laughs> France? France, Eurotunnel. And it is through a rail, tube rail. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. America and Jyoti were uh, automatically, we drove through uh, mm -hmm. uh, the rail and it went to and we reached UK. <laughs> I mean, we really can't pinpoint one. Um, just fantastic for see reaching there uh, since it was our goal. So as soon as we came out of the Euro tunnel, we thought we had uh, you know accomplished what we started off for. Uh, the most important point, obviously, was uh, the World Cup, uh, seeing India matches and then the Grand Final, uh, which was the best match ever, although India was playing. Yeah. Let's uh, start at the very beginning, as they say in, um, <laughs> as they say in Sound of Music. Um, so, iski shuruat kahan se hui? Um, or Anupam ji, aapne uh, flights ke baare mein kubhi suna nahi tha. Yeah. It is so hilarious. It was way back in February 2019, which is uh, three months before we started for the trip. Um, you know, we were thinking of what we should do ahead. World Cup aara tha. I started looking for the flights and I was about to book the flights. But tabhi, <laughs> you know, some, some flash thought in my mind saying, Ki, yaar, you know, let's do something special. Uh, why don't we drive down? And I just opened Google Maps when I dekha kaha pe hai, and then I realized, well, it's all connected. It's all just one, one, one yeah. uh, landmass, although really, really, really far away. Uh, so I think that was the um, first thought that came. Now, the same evening on the dinner table, and I happened to bring this uh, weird thought. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing this and I thought I'll be shot down. Surprise, there was uh, really no opposition to it. In fact, if anything, you know, there was a bit of surprise, but uh, really no opposition to it. And I just happened to mention that, you know, it might take us uh, some time and so on and so forth. Now, 
at that point in time i was myself just not convinced i was like this is way too far it's, it's going to take ages before we get there and uh, and then i started looking on google as to you know how we should go about it now to my biggest surprise uh, i came across uh, a group from india uh, mm-hmm. three girls from coimbatore who had driven from coimbatore to london about two years uh, earlier than we did and uh, and and i was and that got me really intrigued and and you know i had all my doubts of if we can do it and so on but in that state of mind i just happened to message uh minakshi who's also you know our role model and everything to us uh and and she was very kind enough to just get back to us literally within an hour or so and and the very next day we were on a call and it was that call that changed our thinking you know from it being we are thinking and i think it's kind of a crazy idea it it may not be safe and you know all the reasons that you think that why you shouldn't do on that call she changed our minds forever and for me uh, i would say that's been probably the most impactful call i've had in my life so reaching for the trip so i think that's how it started off and then it had to then come into detail planning as to what do we do and how do we do this is a very interesting thing though that she said that uh, are you sure you want to do this with your wife because uh, this sounds to me like a perfect recipe for a divorce who the pudding is up with a shaadi shuda hai so <laughs> if you could talk about the themes the aim, aims of the trip Sure. So for us, the aims were uh, threefold. One was mm-hmm. driving, mm-hmm. two was cricket, and three was family. And and uh, for all of us, that is something that we hold closest to our heart. So you know, so to to, to have these three things that we are so deeply passionate about, driving, cricket, and uh, and and uh, family time, was just fantastic. So I think that was the thing. And therefore, you know, so so that was the main. um thing that we in that that motivated us and then eventually you know having a chance to support team india at the world mm-hmm. cup by doing something special you know uh, by having a chance to you know if they were to get to know about this trip it would make them uh, happier and motivated i think at this point um um anupam ji um thoda sa amx wala concept agar aap samjhaye to it would be good uh, sure. amx painted amx Yeah so um we we actually thought of this whole trip and then we called it AMX paint it red so the paint it red concept came because one day before this trip we were consolidating and we we've never really mm. stopped traveling ever since mm. for a couple when we became mom and dad uh, and i think cumulatively we've done about uh, uh, 49 countries where anupam is driven in so gradually we put all of these trips together on a map and we drew a line uh, showing the route and we just happened mm-hmm. to use a red pen to show the routes all across on the map and slowly the the map started to transform into red and that the whole theme was born that you know in bits and pieces we can do these trips these road trips and paint the whole world red wow. so that was the whole genesis of painted red and amx because um, as you mentioned you know all our names are am so akhilesh mathur anjana mathur anupam mathur avya mathur aditi mathur avya mathur so we are all ams mm-hmm. so the am of amx comes from our names and x because there's a x factor in doing something very very <laughs> exciting uh, if you put it around is also max so we are living life to the max and basically the x is also the unknown there were at any given point of time there were ams but we don't know how many ams because we started off with four then there were six then again four so the number kept changing the x was the variable as well oh, there's such such a such a good way to sort of package it and to give yourself motivation you know when you when you're driving thoda sa top seat aur bhi ja rahi hu magar because you mentioned the cricket i think i would still like to carry on with the cricket team and um, you know just uh, one talk about the matches that you got to uh, see uh, icc's contribution um, how was it watching uh, that uh, absolutely uh, uh, nail biting uh, semi final and final uh, cricket expert will first talk. so we watched three matches the first one was india versus sri lanka the mm-hmm. 44th match of the world cup and india turned out to win as obvious Yes, India was in New Zealand, the semi-final one of the World Cup, and and after a two-day 
of the first day going for a washout, the second day turned up as New Zealand winning. This match was held in Manchester Old Trafford. The third match held in Lords, Lords, uh, London. Mm -hmm. it, it was the ultimate battle for the for the World Cup trophy. It was England versus New Zealand. After two forty one for, for both of the scores, they both ended up with a tie, and and uh, the super over came. In the super over, England beat New Zealand because of Josh Butler hitting the wicket with a run out. So those were the three matches that we saw. But I think uh, you know, as a cricket lover, uh, we were just extremely fortunate uh, and and very 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 blessed to have seen these matches. Firstly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, while we were traveling to London, we had no clue as to when exactly they will reach. And you know, mm -hmm. while we were in Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and so on, there was we had issues with internet connection. So literally, what mm -hmm. happened was we didn't have tickets. So when we reached London, all tickets were sold. Uh, for you know, and then it and then we really got lucky after that. The BBC uh, did an article on us, and on the morning of the uh, match of the semi-final match, India versus New Zealand, I got a call from ICC. Which, by the way, for the longest time, for about 10 minutes, I didn't believe. I thought it was a friend of mine playing a prank. A call from ICC. They said that, well, we have read about what you guys have done. And, and you know, uh, here are the complimentary passes for the pavilion. And, wow. and I think uh, that, that meant a lot. And, and I'm super grateful to ICC uh, and also to BBC for uh, having that story in the first place. Uh, that was, I would say, the highlight of my life, the biggest moment. Um, uh, the privilege to be able to sit in there in the seats, the privileged seats, and um, yeah, very. Yeah, uh, uh, it's just a case of where we got extremely lucky. I don't think we deserved any of the attention we got. The journey me ab itna lamba journey tha, and there were so many people involved, uh, as in family members, but involved. So, har ek jane ki uh, apne koi duties uh, uh, allocate ki thi. Wo... So, ab introduce karate hamari ministries se. So, uh, let's start off. So, Avik, what were you? The Ministry of Happiness! Was oh, wow! For making sure that nobody cries, nobody is demotivated. Very, very good. Of cuteness. She was the Minister of Colouring and Cuteness. And uh, Anupam was the Minister of Driving. Of course. <laughs> I was the Minister of Planning and Packing. Mama was the Minister of Food. And Papa was the minister of all the visas. Right, okay. And writing blogs daily. And the blog. Hmm. At, the, at the end of the day, every day I wrote blogs. Um, uh, viewers ko bhi batana chahungi ki zaroor padhe aap. Because um, Akhilesh ji has <clears throat> not just put in their experiences briefly, but he's also gone into little details such as, um, you know, China ka political system, ya geography. So, when uh, the visas ka uncle kaam shuru kiya, to, um, it must have been a lot of effort. But the biggest difficult part was to prepare for six visas for one country. And sometimes, the whole night we would be working, myself and Anupam. And the details were different from for different countries. Uh, there were some 10 visas we took because Shenzhen, they require only one visa. So you had to wait till the passport come back, then you submitted it at another embassy. Another we got the pa uh, passport from the uh, embassy the time when we were just to leave for uh, meeting the High Commissioner for flag off. But I went directly to High Commission office. We had timed it that way. Mm -hmm. the UK baad mein hai, thoda late bhi aega, kar lenge. The High Commission ne aapke pure trip ko kitna support kiya. And I would like for you, one of you to talk about it, please. You won't believe what happened with us. So uh, imagine uh, the High Commissioner of uh, of India in Singapore. He's someone extremely senior. I take the liberty of writing an email to him. They are thinking of driving down. The next day or so, I got a call from them uh, to, to really inquire if this is genuine. And so he agreed to give us the flag off. Very interestingly, as soon as we entered uh, and, and met the High Commissioner, the first thing he asked is, you know, he inquired about the trip. And then he immediately asked uh, uh, one of his team members to get in touch with us. He took all the 21 countries that we would be going to and asked them to write to these 21 countries and inform that we are coming. 
So you know, so I think Singapore High Commission was just uh, just, just very supportive, very supportive. So, I myself, what I did was I wrote to uh, every high commission and embassy on the way, uh, just more of FYI that we're doing this trip. If we get stuck somewhere, we will request you to bail bail us out, right? And you won't believe I got a reply from every every embassy and high commission, uh, giving me the contact details, wishing us best of luck. Then we entered Europe. We required some paperwork, and then uh, the high commission in uh, Sweden helped us out in in a, in a very major way in the UK as well, right? I think. and i must mention in in the uh, in the sun country see how much india means to local people Let's say uh, big 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 thank you and hats off to the uh, entire all the high commissions to mm. and also the cultural leadership of india because um the moment you step into some of these countries um mm-hmm. you say you're from india and pat comes a reply they're like namaste and um, that that whole um uh, privilege of being an in indian in a foreign land we we could feel that and when we were at the matches whole stadium chanting india india i think that instilled a lot of um yeah a lot of patriotism is into yeah. us as well so it was unbelievable how much uh, bollywood has made inroads into central asia in uh, one of the stan countries it was a first tryst um with central asian hospitality a car was registered in singapore but we were all indians you know uh, and and we don't speak their language so it's a bit difficult explaining all the paperwork to them and everything and the moment you say you're from india the smiles on their face because suddenly you're like oh you're from the country of mithun chakravarti anytime anybody would have any questions for us which were tricky to answer we would say we are from the country of mithun chakravarti so uh, the disco dancer dance from the chakravarti came very very handy they were sitting in a quaint little cafe in uh, samarkand in this big town mm. and we just happened to look up at the tv there's a small little tv showing some movie and guess what it's krish they're watching krish in a cafe in uzbekistan the power of bollywood uh, across the world to break barriers to break ice and to make new friends mm. we spent almost 20 days driving through china uh, uh- a journey in china was extremely memorable uh, we were there for 19 days we covered 9000 kilometers uh, we entered china from south near the border uh, with lao all the way to north western border with kyrgyzstan we, we had one guide it was a regulatory requirement to have one guide in the car and um, mr tom became a family member uh, and and he knew the country in and out you know china is a large country i mean and and uh, he knew not just the how to get around but also he had us with all the paperwork uh, he was there all day with us uh, supporting us and and making sure that we are fine so and making sense of the menus oh, to, yeah. to figure out what we could eat uh now from a driving perspective uh, china has the best infrastructure in the world so I've, i've driven a lot in europe i've driven a lot in the us i've driven in africa i've driven in australia uh many parts of asia as well and south and it's america. south america so it's safe to say that china has the best infrastructure uh we were there we, were, we covered 9000 kilometers of of which i would imagine almost 98% of it was on expressways much much on elevated expressways so it was just high quality uh, infrastructure we were uh, a dream location for a driver and uh, and a place which is extremely safe and I, i i really would want to go back to china one fine day and could you talk about uh, a bit more about how you planned the trip uh, now very early on when we decided to do this trip towards the end of february 2019 we realized we didn't have time on hand so uh, in the overall planning you know there were a few things that we looked at one was uh, the entire route planning uh, and 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 what route do we take which countries which locations do we stay in and so on second one uh, was uh, the food how do we make sure that we are fine uh, with uh, people who are 60 plus as well as kids who are really small uh, number 3 was um, to do with getting the car and 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 all these spare parts right so that we are okay for the trip number 4 was getting a good feel of the risk associated at different places you know it was a huge responsibility to to be there with the family and number 5 was to uh, get for the scenic spots that we going to see and so on so forth. so uh, and and i guess number 6 was also how do we pack right and how do we uh, you know how do we almost make a household for two months in a car 
right? So, so those are the things that we sort of distributed our work with and each of us owning our own things. Papa talked about the visa. As we started to work through it and we discovered more places of interest and the challenges on the route and well, this road is not open at this time of the year and so on and so forth. You won't believe we went through 71 different iterations. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was very interesting because one little tunnel being closed um, at a certain time of the day would jeopardize three days ahead and three days after that. And uh, after the road trip, the major route was done, there was also a day-to-day -day planning that we had to do. Because which is the hotel that which we are staying at? Um, and because it's the whole family, right? From three year old till 60 plus. So a lot of comfort, like how many beds do they have? Do they have a microwave? We were also worried about doing a laundry, for example, making sure we have car to be serviced at regular intervals. So making sure we're stopping in the correct cities where we get these kind of services. Even from a day-to-day -day level, what are we seeing? What is the timing of that place? Do we have to get a guide when we go there? How much is the ticket? What What is the best time to go there? Is there a KFC there? And then for us, we wanted to experience the local food. So, you know, we were also on this um, food exploration journey. So we wanted to explore that as well. There are places where you wouldn't know. For Myers, there's no bathrooms, for example. So, you know, mm. we have to um, accordingly think about how are we going to uh, allocate our breaks? So we, we also searched for hospitals. So always had a plan B in mind. Organization and planning is everything. Tell us a bit about your little kitchen setup, traveling kitchen. We carried many things uh, with us. Food items like dal, rice, all spices, ghee, and utensils, induction stove. Morning, I used to get up at four o'clock or five o'clock as we planned to start. And we used to, mostly I used to cook uh, dal chawal or sometimes if we could find vegetable, then put vegetables in dal. So the whole, uh, the concept of whole meal is there and to pack them in different boxes. And so each, each one has their own little different box. Yeah. So after reaching the destination, we used to make Maggie and pull up mostly these two things. There were also times when Anupam was like, he would mm -hmm. be like very tired and he would just kind of say, Chai mil jai. You know, Mata Anupurna. Okay, she will make your wish come true. It was just like, you know, you <laughs> say it and it's done. Face and weight was a constraint. So Mama did all the planning of how many kilos rice would be good enough. It shouldn't be too much. It shouldn't be too little. The whole planning that, that went into the food aspect because a three-year-old wants something and a, you know, 30 plus wants something else. I kept some pickles, some chutneys. Of your, uh, one of the day blogs that I was reading of Akhilesh Ji, uh, there is this mention where uh, uh, where Aditi Ji joins the trip and she brings Puri Sabzi from... Yes, <laughs> yes. Right, you know. <laughs> and, uh, we even had uh, like, uh, you know, ready to eat. But five different companies make it. So hmm. before we went on the trip, we used to have like, you know, tasting session. The curry chawal of every single company <laughs> and everybody will rate it. Whichever one is liked by all six, we will only take that. There's also a spin-off from this. And I know that Aditi ji and auntie have now started um, a culinary uh, karma, a, a YouTube channel that sort of takes you through various culinary dishes uh, fr from from each of the countries that you travel. Some of our YouTube video, I will, I will link... Um, that um, uh, YouTube channel as well. I had one thing to ask. Anupam ji, you have a two-four point ki advice to anybody who would like to undertake a long road trip like this. I think the first thing is, if the thought comes to your mind, just do it. Right? <clears throat> if you're passionate about something, you'll find a way to do it. So I think, mm -hmm. I think the, the only thing I would say is that if this is something that matters to you, if you think um, road trips or, or traveling long is important to you. Don't think here and there, just do it. That is also true for on just about anything else in life. While the overall, in the overall scheme of things, you look at these big numbers, 24,000 kilometers and so on, it seems a lot. But if you break it down, if you break it down, nothing that we did on any particular day was mm -hmm. anything out of ordinary. It is just that, you know, uh, having the persistence to just do it for so many days, uh, that's what matters. Uh, number two is 
that uh, you know get everyone together it makes a huge difference i remember a friend of mine asked me oh it must have been very tough having six people on the road trip and i said it was actually the other way around if i was doing it all by myself i just couldn't have done that i wouldn't have even gotten all the visas without everyone chipping in if there is any one or two points that looking back you would have done differently little more time to prepare we had two and a half months suppose we had about four months we could have managed better preparation than visa because we were running day by day hour by but people take one or two years i don't think that much is required mm-hmm. because then lot of planning means it will not happen plan it and do it it was perfect it just came together i mean we were thinking um, had we postponed it by even a year we would not have been able to do this like 2020 was a completely changed world so whatever happens whenever it happens it happens for a reason grab your opportunities go for your dreams don't procrastinate you want to talk about okay. two learnings what okay. did you learn oh, the learning is um from anywhere anywhere you go you, you can still study you, even though i was out for so long i still studied in the car Oh, that's a very very mature point abhi what happened was that we asked him are you sure you want to go because you missed so much school and he then said that uh, don't worry mama i will continue my learning i will get my friends to message you all the homework and i will do it in the car and he also said that mama but do you remember when we go out and we travel we also see so much about other countries so isn't that a learning too so i have no answer to that i i, I was 67 when we were traveling so i had no doubt in my mind that i cannot complete so what i say is age is just a number even if you are 80 if you want to do it you can do hasla buland hona chahiye raste apne aap nikal aate hain for me the most significant part of this trip was the part that we went went as a family so in our everyday lives we don't spend so much time and we mm. really don't have the luxury of spending so much time with our children with our in-laws even with our spouses so that was actually a luxury it was the evening sometimes i would start to get tired and then uh, avi and avia would start screaming from behind papa you can do it so <laughs> they even came up with a song they kept singing papa you can do it typically by the afternoon lunch ke baad by 3 o'clock 4 o'clock i would start to get tired तो कई बार करते थे वी वुड जस्ट स्टॉप एट अ पेट्रोल स्टेशन फ्यूल स्टेशन किया फ्यूल एंड देन आई वुड जस्ट रिक्लाइन द सीट एंड स्लीप फॉर हाफ एन आवर वो पावर नैप में लेता था 20 मिनट्स 30 मिनट्स एंड इन इन दैट टाइम यू नो टिपिकली पापा मम्मी अवे व्हेन अदिति एंड आवे दे वुड जस्ट अवे को भागने की जगह थोड़ी ढूंढ लेते थे तो छोटी सी भी जगह मिलती थी वो उसी में गोल पर सुन वी एंटर्ड यूके द फीलिंग ऑफ हैविंग uh gotten to where we uh, where we mm-hmm. wanted to uh against all odds or uh, getting there uh, all of us in 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 good spirits all of us healthy was just fantastic so i think that was number one number two was uh, cricket matches uh, seeing the matches um you know had a chance to see a rohit sharma century uh, at leeds that was fantastic the new zealand semi final match that was uh, really good yes we ended on the wrong side of it but that's okay um and the and the final we were just enjoying the game and without worrying about who's winning or losing and 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 i think it was just fantastic so uh so those are the memories that will stay with us forever you know just to bring out the the helpfulness of local people and with you guys they don't even know you but but i i would really like for you to uh, any any one of you to talk about those two when we had just crossed the border from china into kyrgyzstan we are at the immigration office and, and they are speaking their native tongue and i don't understand that i'm speaking to them in english they don't understand that but there was this man who's trying to communicate something to us we still couldn't understand he kept saying something about he kept pointing to our tires then he said he, he just in the end he tried his best but in the end he just said all the best so we were like okay well he's just a nice guy he's just telling us all the best for our journey but the moment we stepped you know a few kilometers away from there we realized what he might have been trying to tell us he was trying to tell us are you sure you want to go ahead with these tires because it's snowing and it was snowing and we were at a high altitude road pamir highways um no gps signal no wifi 
um, and it was starting to get dark. So it was one of the most difficult uh, you know, parts of the journey really from a driving perspective because mm -hmm. we are in this country unknown, we don't understand their language. We know for sure we're not going at the rate of 10 kilometers per hour. We knew we can't reach our hotel that we're supposed to reach to. Basically, everyone at the back is asking us, so what's the plan B? And we're like, there is no plan B today. When we reached that little town, we saw lights in the distance. We reached the little town. There was a man who was at a petrol station. That was the only thing open at 10 o'clock in the night in a snowing town in Kyrgyzstan. Absolutely. It was that guy who was manning the petrol pump there. He he looked at the uh, faces. He must have known that, you know, these guys are clueless. Uh, and they are in trouble. So he, he was like, do you have the Kyrgyzstan song? We didn't have. So he gave us some. He exchanged our US dollars for the local currency. He gave us petrol. He was at the petrol station after all. He told us where to get food. He, he actually called a few friends in his town. And one of them said, oh, I have an extra bedroom. Somebody can crash here. So literally, we stayed in somebody's house for that night. Um, and that's how, you know, we, we managed right. to not sleep in the car that night. We managed to get a roof above our, above our head because some guy in Kyrgyzstan, whose name we don't even know, he helped us that night. And another guy at the Kyrgyzstan border tried to warn us that, you know, if you can, why don't you turn around and stay in a bigger space bigger city rather than going ahead mm -hmm. and this was true throughout when we were in China for example we just um, saw a very beautiful grape um, you know farm it was it was a vineyard mm -hmm. and uh, our kids had never seen vineyards so we said okay let's take a short break and let's see how you know grapes are grown so we stepped out and suddenly this big man comes walking towards us and we're like oh my god this looks like he's the farmer and he's <laughs> Scold us that you've got into our farm, you're asking me. And he's talking to us something in Chinese. We had small kids and the thing about China is that the new gen, you know, the, the younger generation, they are being taught English in their schools now. To ask us, what is your name? Where are you from? And they explained what their father was telling us. He was actually inviting right. us into his house so that we could enjoy some of the things from his farm. So he had watermelons, mm -hmm. he had grapes, he brought everything for us to try. You know, in our 60 days on the road, where we were complete strangers in every part of the world that we were in. We were strangers. We could have been target for everyone. But mm -hmm. I don't believe we didn't have one incident. Forget mm -hmm. one incident. We didn't have one aggressive look at us. Forget mm -hmm. aggressive look. Uh, we didn't have even one person, uh, you know, staring at us. None of that. Instead, what we got was a lot of love. Uh, people who we, we had, you know, we had some uh, artwork on our car, which talked about the road trip and so on. So those who read it came over and wished us uh, good luck. And these are complete strangers. I remember at a, at a at a border, we were stuck for four or five hours, and that was quite normal, you know, doing all the paperwork and so on. And 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 a couple of strangers just came, pat us on the back, and said, "Guys, just keep carrying on. Don't let this four or five hours bother you." Yeah. And, and 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 that is that was just you know. So I think my main learning was you know. The core human value is empathy, but uh, how much people helped us all along the way, we just couldn't have moved an inch without that. Mm -hmm. I, I remember this moment in Kazakhstan um, and uh, you know, we are really, in, I, I talked about that uh, stretch of land which is very barren, the Aral um, area and you know, we, we basically were looking for a restaurant to have lunch and we couldn't find one. We reached a little town. And uh, we asked a lady who literally had like, you know, she was carrying groceries. She had eggs in one hand and bread in the other. And we just flagged her down and said, restaurant. And then she's like, uh, she tried to speak to us in Kazakh and we don't understand that. Um, then she tried to do the hand signal thing like, you know, go left, go right. And we are still confused. Uh, signal to me that move. So I didn't quite understand. So I moved. So she got in the car, sat next to me. And she then led us by showing left, right, left, right to a restaurant and then parked in front of it. And it's amazing how big people's hearts are. So where next? Uh, next big trip? Kind. Big trip, Australia, uh, hai, all we're thinking Central uh, Central America, mm -hmm. either there or yeah, yeah, Australia. Mm -hmm. And some part of Australia can put a periphery. Karna hai. You know what? Mm -hmm. Jaka bhi border khul jai. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was um, 
great great meeting each and every one of you and i'm hoping ki um our viewers um are able to draw at least some of um that motivation and that gusto that all of you have um you know and that one advice um hopefully will be um the mantra for for many of us that if you want to do it just do it you know very much sir aapke virtuals cafe mein aane ke liye dhanyawad thank you